Multi-user MIMO is a set of multiple input and multiple output technologies for wireless communication, in which a set of users or wireless terminals, each with one or more antennas, communicate with each other. In contrast, single-user MIMO considers a single multi-antenna transmitter communicating with a single multi-antenna receiver. Mu MIMO has at times been referred to as space division. Multiple access users that are transmitting at the same time and frequency may be separated, using their different spatial signatures. In a similar way that OFDMA adds multiple access capabilities to OFDM, Mu MIMO adds multiple access capabilities to MIMO. Mu MIMO was considered right from the beginning of research on multi-antenna communication, including work by Teletar on the capacity of the Mu MIMO uplink, SDMA, Massive MIMO, Coordinated multipoint and ad hoc MIMO are all related to MU MIMO. Each of those technologies often leverage spatial degrees of freedom to separate users. Technology Multi-user MIMO Multi-user MIMO can leverage multiple users as spatially distributed transmission resources at the cost of somewhat more expensive signal processing. In comparison, conventional or single-user MIMO considers only local device multiple antenna dimensions. Multi-user MIMO algorithms are developed to enhance MIMO systems when the number of users or connections is greater than one. Multi-user MIMO can be generalized into two categories. MIMO broadcast channels and MIMO multiple access channels for downlink and uplink situations, respectively. Single user MIMO can be represented as point to point, pairwise MIMO. To remove ambiguity of the words receiver and transmitter, we can adopt the terms access point and user. An app is the transmitter and a user is the receiver for downlink environments, whereas an app is the receiver and a user is the transmitter for uplink environments. Homogeneous networks are somewhat freed from this distinction. Space division, multiple access space division, multiple access enables creating parallel spatial pipes next to higher capacity pipes through spatial, multiplexing and or diversity, by which it is able to offer superior performance in radio multiple access communication systems, in traditional mobile cellular network systems. The base station has no information on the position of the mobile units within the cell and radiates the signal in all directions within the cell in order to provide radio coverage. This results in wasting power on transmissions when there are no mobile units to reach, in addition to causing interference for adjacent cells using the same frequency, so-called co-channel cells. Likewise, in reception, the antenna receives signals coming from all directions including noise and interference signals. By using smart antenna technology and by leveraging the spatial location of mobile units within the cell, space division, multiple access techniques offer attractive performance enhancements. The radiation pattern of the base station, both in transmission and reception, is adapted to each user to obtain highest gain in the direction of that user. This is often done using phased array techniques. In GSM cellular networks, the base station is aware of the mobile phone's position by use of a technique called timing advance. The base transceiver station can determine how distant the mobile station is by interpreting the reported TAR. This information, along with other parameters, can then be used to power down the BTS or MS. If a power control feature is implemented in the network, the power control in either BTS or MS is implemented in most modern networks, especially on the MS as this ensures a better battery life for the MS and thus a better user experience. This is why it may actually be safer to have a BTS close to you as your MS will be powered down as much as possible. For example, there is more power being transmitted from the MS than what you would receive from the BTS even if you are 6 meters away from a mast. However, this estimation might not consider all the MSs that a particular BTS is supporting with M radiation at any given time. MIMO Broadcast 
MIMO broadcast represents a MIMO downlink case in a single sender to multiple receiver wireless network. Examples of advanced transmit processing for MIMO BC are interference aware precoding and SDMA based downlink user scheduling. For advanced transmit processing, the channel state information has to be known at the transmitter, that is, knowledge of CSIT allows throughput improvement, and methods to obtain CSIT become of significant importance. MIMO BC systems have an outstanding advantage over point-to-point -point MIMO systems, especially when the number of transmit antennas at the transmitter, or app, is larger than the number of receiver antennas at each receiver. Two categories of coding techniques for the MIMO BC include those using dirty paper coding and linear techniques. MIMO MAC Conversely, the MIMO multiple access channel or MIMO MAC represents a MIMO uplink case in the multiple sender to single receiver wireless network. Examples of advanced received processing for MIMO MAC are joint interference cancellation and SDMA based uplink user scheduling. For advanced received processing, the receiver has to know the channel state information at the receiver. Knowing CSIR is generally easier than knowing CSIT. However, to know CSIT costs a lot of uplink resources to transmit dedicated pilots from each user to the app. MIMO MAC systems outperforms point-to-point -point MIMO systems especially when the number of receiver antennas at an app is larger than the number of transmit antennas at each user. Cross-layer MIMO Cross-layer MIMO enhances the performance of MIMO links by solving certain cross-layer problems that may occur when MIMO configurations are employed in a system. Cross-layer techniques can be used to enhance the performance of SISO links as well. Examples of cross-layer techniques are joint source channel coding, adaptive modulation and coding, hybrid ARQ, and user scheduling. Multi-user to multi-user, the highly interconnected wireless ad hoc network increases the flexibility of wireless networking at the cost of increased multi-user interference. To improve the interference immunity, five MAC layer protocols have evolved from competition-based to cooperative-based transmission and reception. Cooperative wireless communications can actually exploit interference which includes self-interference and other user interference. In cooperative wireless communications, each node might use self-interference and other user interference to improve the performance of data encoding and decoding, whereas conventional nodes are generally directed to avoid the interference. For example, once strong interference is decodable, a node decodes and cancels the strong interference before decoding the self-signal. The mitigation of low carrier over interference ratios can be implemented across five MAC application network layers in cooperative systems. Cooperative multiple antenna research apply multiple antenna technologies in situations with antennas distributed among neighboring wireless terminals. Cooperative diversity achieve antenna diversity gain by the cooperation of distributed antennas belonging to each independent node. Cooperative MIMO achieve MIMO advantages, including the spatial multiplexing gain, using the transmit or receiver cooperation of distributed antennas belonging to many different nodes. However, the main criterion of cooperative relay is to improve the trade-off region between delay and performance, while that of cooperative diversity and MIMO is to improve the link and system performance at the expense of minimal cooperation loss. Relaying techniques for cooperation store and forward, amplify and forward, decode and forward, coded cooperation, spatial coded cooperation. Compress and forward, non-orthogonal methods. Cooperative MIMO CO MIMO, also known as network MIMO, or ad hoc MIMO, uses distributed antennas which belong to other users. 
While conventional MIMO, i.e., single-user MIMO, only employs antennas belonging to the local terminal, CO MIMO improves the performance of a wireless network by introducing multiple antenna advantages, such as diversity, multiplexing and beam forming. If the main interest hinges on the diversity gain, it is known as cooperative diversity. It can be described as a form of macro diversity, used for example in soft handover. Cooperative MIMO corresponds to transmit a macro diversity or simulcasting. A simple form that does not require any advanced signal processing is single frequency networks, used especially in wireless broadcasting. SFNs combined with channel adaptive or traffic adaptive scheduling is called dynamic single frequency networks. CO MIMO is a technique useful for future cellular networks which consider wireless mesh networking or wireless ad hoc networking. In wireless ad hoc networks, multiple transmit nodes communicate with multiple receive nodes. To optimize the capacity of ad hoc channels, MIMO concepts and techniques can be applied to multiple links between the transmit and receive node clusters. Contrasted to multiple antennas in a single-user MIMO transceiver, participating nodes and their antennas are located in a distributed manner. So, to achieve the capacity of this network, techniques to manage distributed radio resources are essential. Strategies such as autonomous interference cognition, node cooperation, and network coding with dirty paper coding have been suggested to optimize wireless network capacity. Of analogical interest here may be the comparison between the evolution of computing cores and mobile antennas. To wit, a single high-performance core is the first generation of CPU core evolution, progressing to a few cores, and then to many cores in a centralized fashion as the second step, the recent environment. It is anticipated that it will be common for cooperative work to proceed from multiple cores owned by different users, made available to the individual user in return for help with others' information processing. Such catchphrases include ambient intelligence, wireless ubiquitous computing, and the semantic web.